Yo, what's up YouTube? Brennan Wolf here. We're going to be doing another matchup guide today. Playing against Gangplank. Uh, it's one of those lanes that you get more comfortable with it the more that you play it. And I want to try to help you guys be more confident and aggressive while playing this lane. Because that's where I've seen the most success with it. It is, it's a hard lane. It's a counter lane. It's not a good time. And uh, there's two different ways to play it. So you can be offensive or you can be defensive. So I like to play offensive. So these are the runes that I'm running. We're going to have Conquer, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, Bone Plating, preferably Revitalize. Uh, I have Unflinching because they have Anivia, Sejuani, and Braum. But then I want to talk about the defensive runes that you can do as well, which is going to be you know the Grasp route. Uh, so you can run Grasp, and then of course you're going to probably want run Demolish, Bone Plating, uh, Revitalize, and then typically take biscuits and magical boots as well i always run double adaptive unless i'm running the grass then i do attack speed adaptive armor and if we're doing the conquer route we go double adaptive armor which is what i'm doing now and that's what i prefer because you want to play in my opinion you want to play aggressive when you're when you're playing the grass you're more taking the trade from the pistol you're taking the q and then you're queuing in and hitting him back and just kind of taking like even trades with this build we're more looking to all in him and actually punish him for any mistake he makes so we're going to jump right into it, and we're going to talk about the early game. So we're going to talk about the early game in the laning phase, which is where we don't want him to get ahead. Because we know once Gangplank gets a Sheen, he's full build, and it's not going to be a good time. So what we're really looking for level 1 is to only trade with him when that vital is on our side. So running bone planting allows us to get hit with that the pistol a few times and still be alright. We're really trying to farm from a little bit away. If we get the opportunity to trade where the vitals on us, we'll take it. In the early game, we're going to be talking about getting these trades, but it comes with a lot of slide parrying in this lane. You can Q and W at the same time, so you can slide with your parry and hit him with it. So right now, we don't really want to be in this lane. This lane's not a good time. So best thing that you can do, and there's a slide parry right there, for example. And like I said, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. We want to get out of this lane. We want the laning phase to be over. We don't really win the laning phase. It's not very good for us. But what we're trying to do is keep it slow, shove the wave in at the same time, and then get out of it. And I want to back up and show you guys this. This is a really huge tip here. So, I don't know if you guys know this, but you can dodge the barrel damage by queuing into it, actually. So, we're going to slow this down. And I want you guys to watch this. So when you Q, when he hits that first barrel, especially in the early game when these barrels are slow, this is huge for the Gangplank matchup. This is how you're going to beat him by playing aggressively. is by queuing into him, dodging the barrel damage, and doing damage to him, and then walking away. So look at this. This is a perfect trade where we've got the vital on us, and we want to hit that. We want to put pressure on him. He runs out of mana quick in the early game, and we don't want to have to fight him. We really don't want to have to fight him that much in the early game, because we're going to outscale him. We just need to outscale him. So you'll notice we're going to put this at 0.5 and you're going to queue into the barrel. Wait till it's about to hit one. You're looking for the second barrel to be put up and you know he's going to blow it up. Try to do the combo. Queue into it. First barrel blows up and then you move into that range so you actually avoid that damage. So we hit the vital, get the level up, and we move out. So you'll actually notice me do that a lot. And now if you think that you've missed it, then you can just slide parry. Or if you're not comfortable with it, you can just slide parry and you're still going to be able to get away. So we're trying to shove this in and then just get out or make a play. This is just one of those lanes where we, we're we not going to be able to kill him much. He's got his oranges. He's got mobility. He has range to be able to do damage. So a big thing that you can do is shove in the uh, lane. And now in this situation, Elise ends up being here. But just because Elise is here doesn't mean that you can't put a ward down. One of the, one of, A really good ward to put down when you get a roam is to come down and put a ward right here right here from over this wall so that we can see where their jungler is because the second we get behind on Fiora against Gangplank it's going to be really bad going to be really bad so right now I'm actually helping my jungler a lot here and this ends up being a whole fight I believe and this has nothing to do with the laning phase so we'll actually get through with this but it just so happened that Elise wanted to invade as well and we helped invade it. so let's say you just put the ward down there, and then you would just back. It's a cheater's back. You get the first three waves, you push them in, and you're able to get another item. You get 400 or so gold. Um, in this case, we ended up getting a few kills there, so we actually do get the whip. 
this actually go this goes back to my um, season 12 guide. We're going to be obviously looking to buy a whip and a tier in the first pack. We didn't have enough gold, but we brought we we bought the whip first, and then we'll get the tier on the next pack. And here's another thing: we want to freeze if we can. So. You definitely want to try to freeze as much as possible because he's going to do the same thing to you if he can. Gangplank scales as well, but we scale a little bit harder. So we want to hold the wave as hard as we can, and then when we have to shove it, we want to shove it safely. So we want to build up massive waves, do it slowly, and have it crash into the tower so that we have time to roam like we did on the first back into their jungle or mid lane or something like that. Or maybe make a TP to the bot lane and be able to have freedom to move around. So the way I like to think of like League is almost like a chess game, right? We take these waves, and then we build them up, and then we slam them in, and that gives us one free move. A free move being a TP to the bot lane. A free move being a roam to their jungle for vision. A free move being a roam into mid lane. And when we make those plays, and we shove in, we, we gather these giant waves and crash them into the tower, that gives us time to do that without losing anything. We're going to lose like three minions, but we get to make a play, put pressure on the map, put vision somewhere, and it ends up being worth it almost every time nine out of ten times you think of it like a chess game you do this and then you're rewarded by being allowed to do this right and that's kind of how it goes so in this situation right where we build up the waves slowly too it gives us a chance to really make aggressive plays like this the only time that you're going to want to fight gangplank in the lane is if you have the ability to all in him because if not he's going to do a lot of damage and just kite you backwards here we see him with a sheen but he has passed the halfway mark in the lane we don't have flash, and he does have flash, but if we're able to get under him and get the movement speed from hitting vitals, we'll actually be able to finish the kill. If you're going to go for it, if you're going to go for any type of trade on Gangplank at this point, you should just go for the all-in, because it will work. So we'll see here, we have bone plating, we parry the barrel damage, he slowed, hit the vitals, just stick to the vitals, stick to the vitals and they can't get away. Just slowly hitting it, building the wave up, getting the wave bigger and bigger. But also, you know, we want him to lose CS, so that's why you do it slow, so that the minions die, he loses gold, he loses XP, and we're able to uh, slam it without any pressure. Because if he has to fight within like 10 minions at level 5, level 6, he's going to lose. So he'll never try to fight you, it just gives you prio in the wave. So, in these situations, if we ever see, when we're up a level like this, or if it's 7-7 seven to seven and you feel confident, if you have a vital face towards you, You'll notice that every time I go for a fight, I'm basically going all in. I'm going to ult him. I'm going to go for it. We're going to get ganked here. I'm pretty sure we outplay this one. We do. Nice. Whenever I play against Gangplank, I always try to do this and just mainly focus on hitting vitals when fighting him. I'm not trying to really do too much. Um auto attacking unless it's for a vital and just trying to kite around him because we really want to be looking out for dodging like barrel damage and stuff like that so after that we basically have won the early game we're going to keep doing the same thing we've been doing until we're we're never really going to put too much pressure on this tower or try to take it because we don't need to um he just comes back to the lane and then he's going to be too fast he's going to have his ult he's going to be able to slow you so you don't really get the chance to put too much uh tower pressure into this lane Unless you're just destroying him or your jungler's camping you. But for the most part, we're just trying to keep throwing these waves into the tower, backing up, and keeping our lead. So you'll notice that I went Stridebreaker. And the reason being, I take Stridebreaker damn near every time against Gangplank because of his oranges. So if you think about it, when you Stridebreaker him, he has to either use it. And you'll notice that I just dodged the Q damage again there uh, with my Q. So we're just queuing into it, and that allows us to dodge the damage from his Q. Now notice how I immediately go in. So this is why we take Stridebreaker. He had to use his... Actually, we're going to... Let's go back and watch this sequence again really quick. Because this has a little bit of everything to it, right? We're taking Stridebreaker to make him have to make a decision on when he's using his oranges. Either he's going to use them when I Stridebreaker him, or he's going to use them when I hit him with the parry, which is going to slow his movement speed and slow his attack speed. So... We're taking this for a good reason. You'll notice that we're dodging the barrel here, which he has two stacked up with our Q. And then we're going for the all-in right when he gets too close. And we're going to stride breaker him immediately, dodge the damage from the barrels. And if he gets too close to us, we are going to go for the kill. 
you want to play aggressive, confident. If you ever go in on Gangplank, you want to go for the kill. So he walked up too much. Go ahead and ult him, stride breaker him, and now start kiting back to his tower. Run towards his tower. Notice how when he walked up, I didn't play that game. I kept walking straight down. Because he still has flash up, and as long as you're keeping track of summoners, you know it's going to happen. So we're not really too worried about the top vital because he has to go this way anyway. So we're not going to play for the top vital and bait ourselves. We want to take the three down here, and then we want to make him, if he flashes up, then he's going to die anyways. He's not going to be able to out-kite us, right? So we know he has to go back to his tower, which we're not going to bait ourselves. We're going to position ourselves right here and cut it off, and then we are able to get the kill. Now, after getting that kill, we're going to go ahead, since we have the death timer, and he TPs into mid lane, that gives us the opportunity to go ahead and take the tower. And so we've essentially won the early game. So mainly for the mid game, we're matching the split, and we're trying to beat him to the team fights as well. Because he does a lot of AoE damage and he wants to be in team fights because he's able to make more plays in team fights than he is on a split push. He's just able to push waves really fast. So we want to be able to catch him, but we really just kind of want to sneak it. Because a lot of the times, Gangplanks are going to be pushing the wave super fast in the mid game because they have about two items, and they push it very quickly. So they're not paying too much attention to the bushes around them because they're just going to barrel it and get out. So let's say, for example, we'll just say this for an example here. Let's say the Gangplank is pushing right here, and I'm coming down here. So I'm actually going to take the initiative to go through, grab the plant, push here, come from here, and then fight him from behind. Now, if he sees me here, then we'll notice him move. And we're going to see he might go into the bush and try to set up a barrel or something like that. And we would actually switch to blue wards. I didn't take blue wards because I was so ahead and I wanted more TP availability. But taking a blue ward is good in this game so that we could come from here and then keep eyes on him. And then we're going to do the same thing we did in the landing phase where we're going to queue forward to dodge barrel damage or slide parry and then either we want to make sure that we hit the parry so they has to make a decision between the stride breaker or the parry to use his orange but we don't want to use both before he's used an orange so if we go in and we uh dodge it and we slide parry and we hit him with that well we're going to hold on to our stride breaker until we see him use the orange and then we'll use a stride breaker so that it gets slowed in some sort of way and we want to keep following him like that and keep killing him and if we ever see the the um chance to go ahead and join up with our team and help them we want to do that and you'll notice here is a, a perfect example here of what I was talking about earlier with the mid game, how we want to come through and try to catch him basically pushing a wave because that's all he can push away from all the way back here. So he feels gangplanks typically feel comfortable pushing lanes and pushing waves past the halfway point or past where they should be just because they have range with their double barrel. So we actually came from behind him here. We have the mobility of Fiora, so we're able to, you know, go over the wall really quickly and set up for the kill. So we came behind him while he was pushing. Go ahead, and we hit this. And it's very easy. Uh, gangplanks basically always build damage, so they're very squishy. If you play aggressive and confident, you will continuously kill him in these 1v1s. It's the second that you start running away or start losing in lane or falling behind in gold is when it gets really tough. But I wanted to go back and show this fight again really quick to talk about how to fight in Gangplank's ulti. So remember that our ulti, the way when we ulti somebody, our vitals actually stay active for 8 seconds. So you're able to, when he starts ulting here, because I know fighting in the ulti can be pretty scary. So we're going to hit 1, 2, 3, and then we kind of want to get out of the ulti. Fighting in the ulti is never a good thing. It doesn't feel good. But you're actually able to get out, wait for your cooldowns, and then go back in and try to finish the last two. So fighting in the ulti is really bad. But you'll notice how we talked about throughout the guide with the early and mid game, how we're kind of dancing around his barrels, dodging it with the Q into them. We want to play just the entire lane, all of our fights, aggressive, confidently, and it will find us the win. And just avoid this circle when you're fighting. So that's how you lane against Gangplank, ladies and gentlemen. How we get the victory. And now I'm actually going to take you guys into this lobby really quick and show you the slide parry. So what we were talking about in the Gangplank lane is doing that, basically. So go ahead and practice that a few times before, you know, you do it in a game. So you can actually do it a little bit late. You can do it immediately. You can even do it backwards. So this is something that you should definitely learn on Fiora. This has more to do than just the uh, Gangplank guide, basically. You can do it in a lot of different directions, but you can do it late as well. So this just allows you to use your parry anytime within your queue. 
So you can do it slow, and you can do it fast. So, so however you want to do it. So that is basically the end of the Gangplank Guide. Thank you guys so much for being here. Like I said in the last guide, I'm trying to get better with these educational uh, matchup guides, split push guides, build guides, and all this stuff. So please leave a comment, leave a like. Let me know what uh, you guys want to see me do differently or ask any questions you want. I love feedback and criticism, and I would like to know what I could do better to uh, help you guys. So thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate it. And until next time, I'll see you later, guys. Peace out.